there. This is a wall. It's dozens of feet high and only a few feet thick, seemingly made of huge bricks cemented together. Some of it has fallen down, but mostly here it is, stretched across a ravine in the middle of the Michigan woods. But this wall is not man-made. In fact, it's been like this for about a billion years. It's story time. First, let me back up to how we got here. This fall, on one of the last warmer days of the year, I found myself picking my way along a ravine in Michigan's Keweenaw Peninsula. Now, to be clear, this is not public land. To get permission to be here, I had to make a series of increasingly random phone calls following the advice of someone I knew who knew the property owner in a roundabout way. So I'm not going to share exactly where this is. But there I was, trying not to get my socks wet as I made my way back and forth across this creek, all to see something that is deeply improbable and something even more rare than I would have guessed. This wall is made of Jacobsville sandstone, AKA the Bacon Rock, which is really common in this part of Michigan. It's a sedimentary rock dating back to roughly just under a billion years ago. The Jacobsville likely formed as local mountains were eroded and their sediments flowed downhill into the Keweenaw Valley. Over time, those sediments were compressed and cemented together and boom, sandstone. You can now find it in all sorts of local buildings and on various public hiking trails. So initially, this wall was a flat sheet of rock. If you look on this side, you can even see some layers of sandstone looking a little like old concrete. So how did this get to be nearly vertical and so perfectly cracked? Both from below and from above, it looks like a giant fortress wall in the woods. Well, there's not a lot of published information about this place. So I reached out to geologist Paul Brandis, who's super familiar with this area and has done some great science communication work here. And here's what I learned. First off, the brick-like cracks in the wall probably formed when the sandstone was still pretty flat. If it had cracked while it was vertical, we'd see a different pattern. Paul said the cracks remind him of a phenomenon called tessellation, or tessellated pavement. This is where sedimentary rock is weathered and then fractured into these nice, blocky cracks by the movement of the earth. Specifically, the rock would have been fractured by forces acting perpendicular to each other at a roughly 90 degree angle, creating roughly 90 degree cracks in the rock. Now, there have been times where I've learned something about geology that to me seems super cool and, and probably really unique, but then turns out to be a common phenomenon. Tessellation is not one of those things. According to Paul, there are only a handful of places on Earth where you can see it, the most famous being way over in Tasmania. Except while the tessellated pavement there is between 60 and 160 million years old, the wall in the Keweenaw is almost a billion. So not only is this an uncommon phenomenon, but this is also an especially old example. In any case, that likely explains the cracks. But where did those perpendicular forces come from in the first place? And what raised the wall? A likely culprit is the Keweenaw Fault. A fault is a break between two sections of rock, where the rocks can move relative to each other. Movement on a fault can be a few inches, or over time can amount to miles. When there's sudden movement on a fault, that's when you get earthquakes. Well, the Keweenaw Peninsula has a fault of its own, which was active about a billion years ago. Back then, this continent was likely colliding with another landmass. Geologists debate which one, but regardless, this slow collision squeezed the Keweenaw. Over millions of years, that caused the western half of the peninsula to shift upward, like a total of several miles relative to the rock on the other side. Now, when you look at diagrams of faults, they can seem neat and tidy, but especially for a big event like this, the reality is that rocks all along the fault zone are going to be disrupted as pieces of the earth shift and crumble, including this section of sandstone, which is right by the Keweenaw Fault. Paul's educated guess is that the fault may have provided the forces needed to crack this sandstone into its brick-like patterns. Then eventually, movement on the fault would have slowly pulled this rock almost vertical. Paul even speculated that there could be more natural walls around here, buried out of sight under newer rock deposits. But for now, 
I just know of this one, which is pretty spectacular. A billion years in the past is an unimaginably long time ago, and who knows exactly how long it took for this wall to end up in its final position. But what's especially cool to me is that the same forces that made this wall are still active on Earth today, sometimes working so slowly we barely notice them. So maybe a billion years from now, rock that's forming in 2023 will have become a tessellated wall somewhere else in the world. It's a future way too far off for me to imagine clearly, and trying to do so kind of makes my head spin. But one way or another, the Earth will surely get there. Again, since this wall is on private property, I won't share exactly where it's located. But if you're ever in this area and want to see evidence of the Keweenaw Fault, there are plenty of other spectacular places to look. I'll include some more info for you in the description. For now, thanks for being here and for marveling at some cool geology with me. Wherever you are, I hope this makes you think about the world just a little differently, and I'll see you soon.